that is the King James Version, or whatever version you have is fine. It'll also be up on the board. Matthew chapter 11. Amen. Matthew chapter 11. And when you found it, please stand to your seat. Amen. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Amen. 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 While you're finding that uh, after church today, if you would, the lady, please meet the first lady in the back after you after church today. Matthew chapter 11. If I receive this word, I receive this word with, my mind only, with my mind only, it will be dead for me. Dead. But if I receive this word, I will spare it over my mind. It will be life for me. And when the king becomes my priority, the impact of his word will be my reality. Lord, I don't need religious form of fact. I need life. Who do I say receive life? Someone else say receive life. My man say receive life. Amen. Matthew chapter 11, drop down to verses 28 and 29. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest yes, for your souls. Yes, amen. 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 Uh, as I pray, I want to talk for a, a little while about uh, your invited. Yeah. Your invited. Father, I'm not the preacher. The Holy Spirit's the preacher. I'm not the one that keeps me in Jesus. The Holy Spirit keeps me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I submit myself to every every part of me is submitted, Father God, to your authority. Use me in a mighty way so that a light might be drawn ever so close to you. Holy Spirit, give us understanding, Father God. No matter what our grade level, education level, no matter where our station is in life, God, give us an understanding of this text, God, so that we might leave here, God, changed lives. Maybe somebody for the very first time might yield themselves to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, we love you. I study, I need your strength. I'm prepared, I need your power, Lord. I'm ready and willing, but only you can make me able. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. You're invited. You're invited. I don't, I really don't have to ask anyone uh, if anyone has ever dealt with stress of life, I don't have to ask you that, amen? I don't have to ask anyone in here, have you ever dealt with the stresses of life? Uh, uh, if, if you haven't, you're either denying it or you're dead, amen? <laughs> you're either denying it or you're dead. Everyone at the sound of my voice has dealt with the stresses of life and here at home because life is tough. Can we just agree on that? I know you say sanctified for the Holy Ghost. But can we be honest? Right. Life is hard. Life is hard. You're coming over here about keep your lights on because you're saved. Life is hard. Life is hard. Even, even if you live, here's the funny part, even if you lived in a bubble all by yourself, you would still have to deal with the stresses of life. Why? Because you're there. Amen. <laughs> Wherever we are. <laughs> We bring in those stresses. You know, uh, growing up in church and, and uh, being in DBS my whole life and growing up, if any of you have done that, we learned from an uh, early childhood that, uh, it, it, that there is somewhere we can turn in the midst of trouble. Amen? Uh, that's why it's important to learn this at an early age, that in the midst of trouble, how many of you, by, by, by just a, uh, a clap of hands, um, thank God that you learned about God as a youngster? there was somewhere to turn in the midst of trouble. We recognized and we learned that we could turn to Jesus. But what exactly does that mean? What exactly does it mean, turn to Jesus? Uh, we sing, we used to sing a song, uh, turn it all over to Jesus and uh, he'll work it out. Y'all remember that song? We would sing a lot of songs, but, but there's, there, there, there's, I, I love those songs. I want to keep singing those songs. There's a problem sometimes, though, because songs like that, they imply that there is no action on our part. Even though that you turn it over to Jesus, there is still some action that must be done on our 
part. There's still some action. The truth is that if we really want to be released from our plights and our predicaments and our experience, the, and, and, and then experience the comforting embrace of a gentle, humble Savior, Christ says there are some things we have to do. Mm. Turn it over to Jesus and he'll work it out. But then Jesus says there's some things you have to do. Um, you ever been invited to a party, right? And excited. There was a party that went on, on July 4th. Um, Michael Rubin, some of you know what I'm talking about. Michael Rubin had an all white party and in the Hamptons. And everybody that was anybody was there from entertainers. Uh, most of the 76ers were there Jay Z, Beyonce, Rihanna, everybody, politicians. I must have missed my invite. <laughs> I must have missed it. Because uh, I, I certainly would have been there handing out tracks, but I would have been there. <laughs> But, but there's one thing, you know, you feel special when you get an invite. When you get an invite, you, you, you feel special. And, and Jesus gives us this invite. Here it is, point number one, write this down in the text. First, he says, we must come. That's first. That's first. He says, you're invited, but what good is the invitation if you don't show up? What, what, what good is saying, I've been invited? There's no power in being invited. There's no, there's no blessings in being invited. The blessings go, well, the blessings show up when you show up to what you've been invited to. So Jesus says, come. That's a proactive. That's a hands-on invitation. That's your part. Turn it over to Jesus and he'll work it out. But Jesus says, come. And then let me tell you, if you're sitting on your troubles, it's my choice. Let, let me, I, I just want to say that to, to all believers in the room. Uh, and if you're sitting on your troubles, it's my choice. Because there's another avenue you can take. Christ desires that you should be released. Check this out. Christ desires that you should be released from your anxieties. He should be released from all the mess in your life. But he says it can't happen unless you accept the invitation. I have no desire for you to be down and depressed. I have no desire to, for, for, for you to feel down and out. He says, listen, you have to accept the invitation to come. That's what he says. He says, he says, you, you come, Christ desires that, that you are released through these things. Now, Jesus, Jesus had, had just spent, let me give you some background in the text. Jesus had just spent intimate time training his disciples, empowering them to teach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We see that in the prior chapter of Matthew chapter 10. Jesus was in Capernaum, a city that he had chosen to dwell in after his hometown, Nazareth, rejected him. The people of Capernaum, they knew Jesus well. The people, he was no stranger there. The people of Capernaum, they had followed him in crowds. When he went to Jairus' home, they were there. The maiden he had raised from the dead lived right in the city amongst them. They knew who she was. She went to school in September. You died in July. How are you here in September? They knew who she was. Right? Jesus was in Capernaum with them, right? The rulers of the synagogue, the pastors of the church, they could bear witness to Jesus' goodness and power. They all knew who Jesus was. They watched him day by day as he walked by the lake. They listened and they talked as he taught them from a fishing boat just a few yards offshore. Several of his disciples were well known in Capernaum. He wasn't a stranger cornerstone. Matthew the publican, James and John, Peter and Andrew, the disciples had talked to everyone about Jesus. Wonder working power. They talked to everybody about Jesus' tender mercies, his compassionate love, his calm and simple dignity. All the details of Jesus' life had been gossiped about with great interest. Yeah. Yeah. They gossiped about his birth in Bethlehem. They talked about his teaching at the temple at age 12. They talked about the wedding that uh, the wedding he went to where he turned water to wine. They talked about it. But even in Capernaum, many who had heard his message and witnessed his miracles, they refused to repent. Sounds like, sounds like us. Uh, we, we know all about him. Right? But, but, but sometimes we refuse to repent. And so Jesus scolded them. Remember on Matthew chapter 11, verse 20, they refused to repent. And Jesus scolded them. And he, and, and he says, the cities, he, in other words, the Bible says he upbraided the cities, right? They rejected him. 
because they refused his heed of his invitation to come. So Jesus says, come. He has his invitation. He says, come. See, Christ desires all of you, whether you're here, whether you're watching online. Christ desires that everyone should know him, but we have to take the first step. Amen. Turn it all over to Jesus. That's cool. But Jesus says, you've got to come. You've got to take the first step. He says right here in the text, if you labor and are heavy laden with life, God has laid out a path for you. And the first road sign on the path says, come. Come this way. If you walk this way, you won't walk alone. If you walk this way, you won't walk alone. If you come this way, if you're weary, if you're exhausted, if you're drained, if you're shattered, Jesus says, come up this way. I know you've heard of me. I know you've seen what I've done. I've worked with people's lives all around you. You've seen miracles in other people's lives, but I'm inviting you to come into a relationship with me. Come this way, come this way. It's the path God has ordained for all of us. It's his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants to be your guide in a face of confusion. Jesus beckons us to come. He invites us to lay down the burdens of uncertainties and go in a different direction. He says, stop being uncertain. Let's go in a different direction. Come to me. And he says, listen, listen. I will show you a direction. God said, I will show you a direction that leads you into my loving arms. And he wants us to diligently seek him. That's Hebrews 11, 6. So the first part of the invitation is that you come. So, so you're invited. You're invited into a relationship with Jesus Christ. But that's not enough. Next he says, after you come, he says, take. Come and now take. Now again, let's go back to forgive the speed. You get invited to a party. You know, you get invited to, to the Michael Rubin party, the white party for July. You're there, but, but you can't really enjoy unless you take. If someone invites you to a cookout, they expect you to take a burger off the grill, right? No, no, nobody, nobody's going to force you. Nobody's going to gonna, gonna, gonna spring to you. Take in the same way Jesus says, listen, you're invited, but here's the next step. I need you to take. We must take. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Now, it would seem strange to ask someone who is burdened with this life to add Christ's yoke to an already heavy weight. I know that. But that's only if you don't understand the purpose of what a yoke is. We don't understand the purpose of a yoke because we're not fun. Ain't nobody here behind the mule. Nobody got two horses here. Amen. And, and, and yoking two oxen together behind the mule. No, let's, let me see. Maybe we might understand hitch, trail hitch. Right? I know all y'all got money. All y'all camping. Amen. We got campers and stuff. So we understand hitch. So Jesus talking to them in a language that they understood. He says, take my yoke. Jesus spoke in parables. He's a parable preacher. And he uses common everyday experiences to unfold the mystery of his ministry to the lost. And most of the people in Capernaum, and remember, he's still in Capernaum. They are farmers, and they knew something about farming. At the very least, they knew that an animal would not plow without being yoked. They knew that. The yoke was attached to two animals for the purpose of having them, here it comes, work together. So what is Jesus trying to teach? Jesus is saying, be yoked with me and we will work together. Y'all miss that. He said, be yoked to me and we will work together. Still, it requires us to take it. It still requires action on your part. Christ will not put his yoke on you. You have to desire it. Right. Christ ain't just going to show up and put his yoke on you. I'm glad you got saved. Glad you're going to heaven. But it's more than that. Your salvation is more than just going to heaven. Uh, until the Lord calls you home, you still got to deal with some stuff here. You get your salvation. Within your salvation, there are some promises. God has a purpose for your life. God desires to do something great in your life. But in order for that to happen, guess what? We have to put his yoke on. He will not put it on us. I have to desire to be what God wants me to be. I have to desire to produce what God wants me to produce. So in other words, listen, you have to desire to give up your lonely, worrying, 
this stressful journey and walk with Christ. I want to share with my wife today because I have such a desire. So many times, so many times, we celebrate, and I think we focus more on what God has brought us out of. Everybody focuses on their testimony. I'm glad you used to be. I'm glad you used to be locked up. I'm glad you used to be an addict. I'm glad you used to be doubtful. But all we hear about is what you used to be. The other half of it, you ought to tell God, but you tell people what God has purchased you to be. What I used to be a part of it, but what I am, I'm trusting in God through his son Jesus Christ. He is the mind. I'm just a friend. I can't do anything outside of him. You ought to celebrate what God wants to do in your life. In your life. Uh, always talking about what we came out of. That's best. Yes. But, but, but listen, you've got to give up your worrying, distressful journey. Here, 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 here's his promises. Here, see, this is what Christ promises if you do this. He says, my yoke, he says, come now, come on, here's the invite, come. He says, now take, because my yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. And my burden is light. See, Christ wants you and I to know that aligning our thoughts with his, you can better navigate the complexities of life when you navigate your thoughts with Christ's thoughts. You can, you can better navigate uh, when life goes at you. We'll be, we'll be less apt to have our spirits wounded. We'll be less apt to have our confidence shaken because his yoke will bear the weight of our burden. Nothing because it's his yoke that bears the birds. It's his yoke that bears our, our, our birds. I have that confidence in him. His, listen, let, let me just help somebody. Listen, his mercy is to the miserable. His grace is to the guilty. His freedom is to the fugitive. His counsel is to the confused. He is a blessing. He is a blessing to the burden. Give God Come. You take. He says, but now we're not done. He says, finally, you've got to learn. He said, come, take. He says, learn. It's right there in the text. I just read it to you, Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, 28 and 29. He says, come, take, and learn. This is where a lot of us fall off, right? This is where a lot of us fall off. Jesus says in his invitation, come, take, and learn. He says, learn of me. Listen, listen, listen. You can come to school. You can take a class, but the learning part is what completes your education. Amen. Can I say that again? Amen. Just because just you showed up in class don't mean you got educated. That's right. Huh? Amen. Listen, listen. Just because you got perfect attendance don't mean you got educated. That's right. just, just because you come to church every Sunday don't mean you learn anything. Amen. That's, that's why we got people in church 20, 30, 40 years and they still babes in Christ because they haven't learned stuff. Then we got people who got saved five years ago and because of learning, God has promoted them. He says, come, take, and learn. He says, learn of me. Learning completes your education. In other words, Jesus said, something's got to sink in. Something's got to sink in. Christ calls you and me to learn from him, to embrace his humility, to embrace his meekness in the face of all life's challenges. He said, learn of me. See, listen, listen. He wants us to get him. I know that there's a commercial going out that says he gets us. This nice warm and fuzzy commercial. God gets us. Christ gets us. But, but he says, learn of me, because he wants you to give him. He wants you. I, mean, I, I see, I, I don't that, that didn't make enough people say amen. He wants you to get him. Yes, he gets you. He gets you so much that say, listen, somebody got to die for their sins because they just ain't getting it right. He gets you so much that Jesus left his heavenly throne to come down here, take off his glory, put on your sin, and, and, and we're washed by the precious blood. He gets us so much that he provided a savior. But then he said, part of me. Part of this process is uh, you, you've got to get him. See, the people of Capernaum talk about they had a chance to get it. 
people of this city of Capernaum, just like these people of Vineland, people of Cornerstone, they, they, they got a chance to get it. They had a chance to come to Jesus. They had a chance to take his yoke upon them, just like you do. They had a chance to learn from him, and many rejected him. See, you and I have the same chance. In fact, you, you and I have a greater privilege because we have the word of God and the promise of his spirit. I'm not, I, don't, I don't beat up my, um, my, my spiritual forefathers and foreparents, like the ones in the Bible, especially before the Holy Spirit came, because they didn't have the Holy Spirit as a helper. <laughs> like, like Abraham just, you know, it was him and God. He just was him and God. And before Jesus died, the disciples, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. And so they, they may have struggled a little more than you and I. But here's the deal. You and I, we have the Holy Spirit, and if we're struggling, it's because we want to. Let me say it again. It's because we want to. You know, it hasn't been our trials and tribulations that's killed us. It's been our comfort. Our comfort has made us enemies of the cross. Our comfort, our comfort, thank you, look, one brother clapped up front, he said, that, and you know what, as I think about it, you know, it's comfortable to sit at home and watch online. It's comfortable not to come to church because the air ain't working, it's too hot, right? But guess who went to church? Your, your foreparents went to church. Huh? I remember my old, my old Baptist church before we got central air. That's how long I've been Christian. Boy, they were just. Y'all remember that? Sit there, sit there, rock. And they would sing all kinds of stuff, right? They would sing, Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. What's the rest? crazy animal stuff. This guy was talking about the troubles with his goats versus his sheep. He said, his goats, man, he said, man, I got, I got goats and I got sheep. He said, these goats don't listen to nothing. I feed them every day. I take care of them every day. I shelter them every day. I protect them every day. I give them their shots. They go to the vet. They do it. I take care of these goats and I call them and they go the other way. He said, my sheep on the other hand. They know my voice. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he said, he said, my voice is the only voice they respond. Another shepherd could come up and call my sheep. My sheep ain't going nowhere because they know my voice. Now my goat on the other hand, all you gotta do is hold out a tree and a goat on the shore. Sometimes I wonder if we're more goats than sheep. But Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And they know that I'm the good shepherd. And as we walk in his footsteps, we learn, we learn as I grow in Christ, and as you grow in Christ, we learn that our identity is rooted in Christ. My identity is not who I used to be. My identity is rooted in Christ Jesus. He ensures that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God, God of Christ ensures that we are uniquely designed for his purposes. See, listen, the criticism and the calamities of the world will soon fade away in the light of his affirmation and love when you really trust him. And in other words, listen, everybody has a story. And, and, and one of the things that we shy away from 
is that when God really begins to use us, we get afraid of what those who knew us in the prior, uh, in the prior life might say about us. And so we walk slow. We don't, we don't proclaim the gospel. We're kind of shy about it. We just kind of wait for them to die off and then we can proclaim the gospel. But God says, and Jesus said, listen, he said, listen, in me, all the criticisms will fade away. When you trust me and do what I called you to do, anybody that's going to criticize that, don't worry, I'm going to shut them up. Anybody going to lie, anybody that's going to try to disdain you, don't worry, don't worry. It will fade away in the light of the love that I have affirmed you with. Listen, all of you in here today have been affirmed by the love. If you're a believer, or if you're a believer, you have been affirmed by the love of God. And he says, my love will affirm you when you walk in the Don't worry about what they say. My love, my love for you will affirm you and qualify you. And I'll put you in front of people you need to be put in front of. I'll elevate you. I'll move the pieces around just for you because I have affirmed the calling on your life. You trust them, you come, take, and learn. See, when life comes at you like a ton of bricks, remember that your ultimate aim is to please God, not man. Your ultimate aim is to please God. You're born again now. Your ultimate aim is to please God, not man. When you focus on God's approval alone, you will discover the strength to rise above the confusion of life that will keep yourself on the straight and narrow path. I praise God for the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps us grasping to the mind. It's the, I, I don't listen. I don't have enough sense to keep myself grafted in Jesus. I thank God it's the Holy Ghost. I thank God it's the Listen, when you get saved, somebody don't want to talk about it. I just often say, there's a line there that you won't cross. Yeah. Right? You know, you like me, you've been in church your whole life. I don't remember the day without church. And I was that teenager. I can't wait. <laughs> so I ain't got to go to church no more. <laughs> I ain't never took me to PK. I ain't never going to church. Man, I went to college. Down there playing football. And I looked at the other Christian. I said, man, these fools is crazy. I've got to get to church. Right? And, and, and it was nobody. That wasn't Ralph. That was the Holy Spirit calling me. Yeah, listen, I can only let you go so far, brother. I, I can only let you go so far. And listen, so once you've been saved, and whether you're saved or not, but once you've been saved, right, you are crafted in, and the Holy Spirit, is, is, he keeps you in Christ, and you learn of him, and as you learn of him, you grow. You should have a desire to learn more and more of him. Listen, that's why you came to church today. You didn't come to church because you felt like it. You came to church by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Because there's a desire in you learn more of God. And when you learn more, he grows you. He grows you. He grows you. Like I said, life can break us. Life can overwhelm us. Life can lead us devoid of hope. But Jesus, somebody say, but Jesus. but Jesus. But Jesus is the source of true hope. Jesus extends his invitation to us. Jesus, he offers a solace and restoration in the midst of our darkest moment. Jesus says, come. He says, take. He says, learn. In the midst of any crisis, Jesus is calling out to you. He's calling out to me. He's inviting us to come to him. Why? Because he understands your pain. He's not distant. He's not indifferent to your struggle. He empathizes with our weaknesses, for he himself, the Bible says, endured an unimaginable suffering on the cross. Through Christ's invitation, we have the chance to learn of God's faithfulness, to learn of God's promise of restoration. Not only will you come and be reconciled, you'll come and be restored. Give God some praise for restoration. struggles of this life do not have to define us. There is an opportunity for God's power to be activated, for God's power to be galvanized in our lives, our learning. Here it is. This is all I wanted to say. I've been preaching for 20 minutes to say this one thing. <laughs> our learning will lead to leaning. Come on. Our learning 
will lead to lean. The more we learn, the more we lean. The more I learn, the more I try him. The more I learn, the more I trust him. The more I learn, the more I lean on him. The more I lean on him, he just allows his feet to guide me. The more I lean on him, he just allows his feet to guard my heart and my mind. The more I lean on him, but I've got to learn something. It still stands for you and I. See, 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 listen. Will you be one of the scolded or will you heed to Christ's invitation to come? Now, I love that invitation to come. And I, I'm running out of time, but, but that, that, that invitation to come doesn't have any stipulations on it. Yes, Lord. He just says, come. Yes. Now, now, I was invited to Michael Rubin's party, and yes. I sure I was, but I just couldn't find an invitation. <laughs> To show up at that party, there were some stipulations. You had to wear white. Right? All white. But Jesus said, just come. But Lord, you don't understand my background. Come. Lord, you don't understand I'm an addict. Come. Lord, you don't understand I have a small record. Come. Lord, you don't understand I have two or five different women. You said, come. You don't know what you do. You don't understand I'm a liar. I'm a cheat. I'm a cheat. I want you to take up my love. You don't have to take. I want you to learn of me. 